did Oprah's body language mean and what did it say when she was talking to Gail King about the Meghan and Harry interview? Greg, why don't you tell us about the video we're going to watch? Yeah, this was recorded in Mark's hometown of Toronto, and this is Gail King, our favorite interviewer, interviewing her friend Oprah about whether she had planned a bombshell interview with these two or that was just news to her. I was as surprised by the bombshell as everybody else. I was doing an interview to offer them a platform to tell their story about why they left. And that was my number one intention, was just clarity on why did you leave? And so some of the things that were revealed in that interview came as a surprise to me. And those surprises are now referred to as bombshell, but I didn't set out to do a bombshell interview. Mm -hmm. I set out to do uh, an interview, have a conversation that would allow them to tell their story. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so the big thing here for me is, well, number one, that repetition of bombshell, bombshell, bombshell. Think about that metaphor. I mean, obviously there wasn't an actual real bombshell went down, but the, the metaphor is destructive, it's surprising, it ex it's explosive. I mean, it's kind of everything that you would want in a news story if you're, if you're somebody who likes to make money out of the media. So let's come back to that, that later and, and, and whether you would really be surprised by a bombshell or is that really what you're looking for. But interesting body language there, head back there massively, whole body goes back on some of the things that were revealed. I don't find that movement particularly congruent, though. I mean, it's a little bit kind of late. So I'm, I'm you know, I, find, I think it was natural. I think it was, let's say, authentic, but it, it's odd. It happens at an odd time. So I'll be interested in what you guys think about, about that. Um, one last thing, um, allow them to tell their story. Bitter taste in the mouth there as well. So again, is she surprised by this bombshell? Is she taken aback by it, really? Did it really create some bitterness for her? Wow, I didn't really want this to explode. Mm, don't know. Uh, Scott, what do you think? I think she looks pretty comfortable here. She, of course, she, it's Oprah, so you could, she could talk about anything, and she'd look comfortable, but her illustrators are flowing properly. Her cadence is just loping right along. She doesn't sound like she's pausing to think and construct anything. Obviously, she's already known, knows what she's going to say because she knows Gail and they've talked about it. But still, what comes with that when you make something up or you're not being honest with it, you see a lot of these little glitches going on that we're not seeing here. Her, her, the main thing is as she's um, using her, her illustrators, they're landing right where they should. Her, her tone, her vocal tone is where it always is. Everything's really, really smooth. Nothing's out of place. Everything sounds good. Her uh, illustrators are big, as we know from from Alton uh, Frey, that if most of the time, a lot of times when someone's being dishonest or they're, or they're being deceptive, their illustrators will get a whole lot smaller or they may not use them at all. And she's just, she's doing everything the way you would do that we would expect to see if someone's being honest. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, one thing that somebody might pick up on here is this thing that she's doing with her her fingers. I think this is a, just a very mild, pacifying gesture. And she does, a, if you watch any of her interviews all the way back into the early 90s that I could see, you can see these small little behaviors. And she has multiple methods of keeping herself calm. She's super calm and collected. This is just one of those things, doesn't indicate deception or stress. And Mark, to your point, this backward head movement uh, I think this was at the recall of hearing the information, the recall of reacting to the information like, wow, that that was big. So, yeah, I agree with you guys. This is honest. And I think if there was some deception here, we would see some irregularities no matter what celebrity it is. There's always going to be something there uh, for us to grab onto. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, interesting. You bring up the ring thing. I do that myself. Dr. Phil does it, and we sat with him. He's doing this, changing it from finger to finger. I don't think it necessarily indicates stress. It can indicate boredom. It can indicate just, hey, I got something to do. I'm doing my thing, and I'm doing this. I do that fairly often when I'm sitting around. So I don't think that means anything. Her illustrator, Scott, I, just what you said, there are, are key points where her arms are moving at the right time, her fingers are closing and opening. She has her hands together and milling them. I think that's just, look, I'm in front of a camera. I do this all the time. I need to look comfortable. And look, she's been in front of a camera for longer than Many of us have ever been in front of any of this stuff. So she's adapting a little bit, but it's no big deal because it's just who she is. Watch her hands as she tells a story. 
And as she reaches to pull together their story, she's illustrating, not just illustrating, but very succinctly saying they could tell their story, pull things in. My number one intent was clarity. Does that look like clarity to you? Wide open. She does this and then back. She does the back. I agree. I think it's shock at maybe what she heard that she didn't expect them to throw out there. She might have even known it, but she didn't expect them to say that about the royal family. And then she goes to the tweezer movement to put a fine point on things as she's talking about why did you leave? Her tone of voice is telling. Her pitch is serious and consistent. Her cadence is not halting or rushed. She's got a light smile of amusement as she makes eye contact with Gail at the end. And she just illustrates everything in time, in cadence, her pitch, everything's together. I really believe she didn't know that they were gonna say some of those things on TV, whether she knew them or not. I was as surprised by the bombshell as everybody else. I was doing an interview to offer them a platform to tell their story about why they left. And that was my number one intention, was just clarity on why did you leave? And so some of the things that were revealed in that interview, came as a surprise to me, and those surprises are now referred to as bombshell, but I didn't set out to do a bombshell interview. Mm -hmm. I set out to do uh, an interview, have a conversation that would allow them to tell their story. Mm -hmm. And now people say reconciliation, reconciliation, we hope the brothers reconcile. What do you say? I do not get into people's family matters, and I, ser you know, everybody who has, experience some challenges in their families with in-laws or brothers or sisters knows how difficult some of those situations can be. And I'm sure that, you know, for the royal family, it's no different. And uh, nobody consults me about their family business. So I try to stay out of people's family business. Chase, what do you think? I think it's awesome that when she's saying everybody who struggles with X, Y, Z, I think it's great that she's socializing the issue instead of allowing the question to be, let's talk trash about this family who's also grieving right now. She socialized it and said, you know, everybody, all of us have problems. Everybody's got problems. I like that she did that and kind of didn't angle toward the drama, which is great. And she starts to self-soothe a little bit with the ring on her left hand at the moment she says family and relationships might be a coincidence. I'll leave it up to you and the, the brilliant minds in the comments to figure that out. And when she says nobody consults me about their family, that's the only time we really see some hard digital flexion there. Not sure why, but digital flexion typically means the fingers are coming in towards the palm, some kind of closing off. Something's closing off because the body's closing up a little bit, potentially just a desire to end the conversation or some pre-event anxiety about the joke that she had just made. A lot of us get nervous immediately after a joke before the reaction happens, which might have been that. Scott, what do you got? All right, I agree with you completely. Everything looks, again, as it should look. She does get a little bit, when she, uh, you're right, when she starts talking about family, gets a little bit iffy there, only because I'm sure it's stressful for her because when she's, ta she's talked about other, other families and other people and families and their family. But in this case, she's saying i'm really not interested interested in doing that that's not what i do that's not who i am and i think she's being honest about that I, I really can't add a whole lot to that mark what do you got yeah so um look again repetition of this idea of reconciliation 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 so we've had bombshell 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 reconciliation 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 and so the big narrative here which is a primal narrative is things get broken and you want to put them back together again everybody's experienced that we've all broken stuff and we've instantly gone oh i hope i can put it back together and sometimes we have and sometimes we haven't sometimes we've been disappointed by putting it back together sometimes we've been delighted so there is this overarching big story that's being pushed here and the, the news agencies are doing it you know as we speak this idea of can these you know four people or two people get reconciled and get put back together again it's a beautiful uh, story um so she says uh, i do not get into family matters here's what i'd say is that that might be her personal point of view right now but there's a lack of evidence for that because of course she does produce um uh entertainment that is about family matters so it's 
contrarian to what the bigger picture is. She says, um, I try to stay out of people's family business. Well, then best not to interview people then, isn't it? Because, because th that's what your audience is interested in. There is nothing more interesting for an audience than the relationships between people. We get so excited by those relationships. So I, I don't deny that on a personal level, she feels she doesn't get into family matters and she does stay out of people's business, but she is in a milieu, a, a world of the media, which is obsessed with family matters and obsessed with people's relationships. And the royal family are an icon. They are a symbol of relationships. So it's, it's a tough thing to say, given what she's involved with. Uh, Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I, I like a couple of things in here. The first one is she shows genuine amusement at the assumption that the royal family would ask her for advice. I mean, I think even she's Oprah, she may be American royalty. Mark, can you imagine the queen dialing up Oprah and saying, hey, Dr. Phil, Oprah, what do you think of? No, it's just not going to happen. And you can see her eyes are smiling, her lower face isn't. And then she's lilting her way through the words can be, am I sure? like looking for approval. And that's a friend talking to a friend and language is familiar. Then there's this at she shifts tone and cadence. She shifts her speech patterns. I do it in the South all the time. If I'm talking to Southern folks and something's broken, I'll say that dog won't in it just to say something like that. And a lot of times in African-American culture, they'll shift pattern in the way they speak to other people that they know well for the same thing. And you hear some of that in her tone change in the end. That's familiar. That's comfort. And she says, basically, yeah, that ain't happening. I ain't, I ain't getting into business. You hear her change the way she talked. I think we heard Barack Obama masterfully do that at times when he would shift gears there and make himself more folksy and more down to earth. And I think that's what we're seeing. And now people say reconciliation, reconciliation. We hope the brothers reconcile. What do you say? I do not get into people's family matters. And I, cer you know, everybody who has experienced some challenges in their families with in-laws or brothers or sisters knows how difficult some of those situations can be. And I'm sure that, you know, for the royal family, it's no different. And uh, nobody consults me about their family business. So I try to stay out of people's family business. Well, let's do this. Let's roll around the room and see what we think real quick, even though we just did. This is a short <laughs> one. Yep. Uh, Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, so I think it's complex what's happening here. I think you have got somebody who's being very honest uh, with the audience and with the interviewer here. At the same time, there's an, there's an honesty uh, around, we, or we have to be honest around the fact that she's in entertainment and entertainment loves the idea of the bombshell and the reconciliation. So she's having to manage these two things at once. It's a management situation that's going on here, I would say. Uh, Chase, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with you guys. Mostly honest, a lot of entertainment stuff going on. Oprah had an extremely rough childhood and upbringing. If you haven't heard about that, wow. Uh, so maybe, that's, maybe there's a, a soft spot there uh, for family drama and family trouble. Greg? Yeah, I've heard that she actually considers these guys friends, so maybe that plays into it. You know, it's her friend's family, and you don't want to probe into that too much. What I love is watching the familiar between two kind of powerhouses in this business, talking to each other and how comfortable they are with each other. It puts her more at comfort, and she is very fluid in what she's saying. Her All of her emphasis is in the wrong place. Everything is working well. She's believable, and I love that they can talk to each other the way they do, and she said, this interview is over. Scott, what do you got? I agree with all you guys. I, we're seeing some uh, two professionals, like you were saying, Greg, just talking for a few minutes. They know why we're, why they're there, and it's a big deal. But I think I think Oprah handled it perfectly and just said exactly what what not just what she should say, but I think she told the truth. I think she said, "Here's what happened," and there it was. So that's what I got. All right, we good? Yeah, I'm good. Right, Bills. See you next time. Deal. So what do you got? I'll be sad and I'll hang it to the nose and the silly.